So not too long ago, I posted a video called why most pre-built suck. The keyword being most, meaning that some pre-builds are actually not that terrible. And uh, we'll actually be taking a look at one such option today from Corsair. This is their Vengeance gaming PC. It's an all AMD system that comes in two different models, both of which feature a Ryzen 7 3700X, eight core 16 thread processor, and a Radeon RX 5700 XT. The only difference that you'll find between both models is that the lower end one that's more affordable features a B450 motherboard and 480 gig NVMe SSD, where the higher end model trades that in for an X570 board and twice the NVMe capacity. I am not sure what model Corsair sent me, so we're gonna find out together how much Corsair really loves me. I'm, I'm not expecting it to be a lot. Now, before I gut this sucker, I gotta give you the obligatory spiel as to why someone might want a pre-built like this. Reason number one, time and hassle. It goes without saying that not everyone and their mom is gonna be willing and able to build their own gaming PC for a variety of reasons. It could be because of a disability or a lifestyle. They've got 35 kids and they just, they, they don't have the time. How are you gonna build a computer with 35 kids in the room? This is impossible. Whatever the case may be, a pre-built like this gets you up and running in no time flat with zero fuss. Reason number two, warranty. That's right, you're dealing with one single warranty policy. So should anything go wrong, it simplifies the process of trying to get something replaced or RMA or checked out, whatever the case may be. I'll never tell anyone to not build their own PC if they're up to the task, but it can be annoying dealing with roughly a dozen different companies, each with their own policies. Corsair offers a two-year warranty on all the parts in this system. So if anything goes wrong, you just hit them up directly and they'll take care of it for you. I cannot tell you guys enough how many companies out there have terrible customer service. Trying to replace or repair a part from some of these companies is a royal nightmare. Those of you who share my pain know exactly how valuable an umbrella warranty like this can be. All right, let's cut her open. Here we go. Doo, 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 doo. I have to be careful here because I do have to send this back to Corsair after I'm done with the video. Boo. That's actually fine. We don't have room for it anyway. Also, do you like that we're filming in the living room today? Thought it'd be a nice change of scenery. Been a little cooped up, feeling a little stir crazy in this house with all the stuff going on. So this is refreshing. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Ooh, is a model name on top? No. Okay, this is really big. I'm gonna need two hands. <laughs> By the way, don't mind all the ugly blankets on our new couch. That's just so the cats don't come completely ruin it. All right, baby, here we go. Whew. All right, still, still no model. Still, oh no, model number right here. This is Corsair Vengeance 6182. They gave you the high-end one. Corsair loves me. Thanks guys. Oh, I still gotta give it back though. You guys suck. So this is the high-end model that's going for $2,000 right now at the time of filming, featuring Corsair's own Crystal Series 280X case, an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X that's liquid-cooled, probably a Corsair cooler, AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT, we'll see which add and board partner that is, 16 gigs of Vengeance RGB Pro, DDR4 3200, one terabyte Force MP600, nice M.2 NVMe SSD. This is a PCIe Gen 4 drive uh, that is supported by the X570 motherboard that's inside. You can see it's micro ATX, as is the uh, form factor of our case here, with a two terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive as well. Power supply is Corsair's RM650 80 plus gold unit and Windows 10 Home is pre-installed. Beautiful. So remember in that pre-built video that I did uh, recently that I mentioned earlier, where I talked about how most system integrators make their profit margins by using really cheap components and, and skimping quality off the top. Corsair makes their profit a different way entirely. They do that by actually manufacturing a lot of the parts that go into these systems themselves. They make their own coolers, they make their own power supplies, memory, cases. This ensures that they're able to make money and sustain their business model while giving consumers a product that doesn't and totally suck. What a concept. Don't rip people off. Revolutionary idea. Corsair should write a book. All right, let's unbox the second box because this is one of those products that comes with two boxes. It's like an unboxer's wildest fantasy. All right, so right on top, we've got some accessories here, power supply cable and uh, Wi-Fi antenna. I'm gonna say that's Wi-Fi antenna for our motherboard warranty guide. And it's time for me to use two hands again. All right, here we go. Whoa. I hope this thing doesn't break our coffee table. Wifey will be very mad at me and I will be banned from shooting in the living room. Don't shock me. Don't shock me. Don't shock you know, when you've unboxed thousands of things in your lifetime, you gotta get creative. All right, so first off, packaging was really solid. It came in basically the same box and packaging that their 280X case normally comes in. We've got some Instapacks inside to keep parts from moving around, particularly the graphics card. And we still have all of the plastic peel on, on the glass panels around the case. So you get to peel that off yourself. Ooh, baby. Am I supposed to do that? Is that okay, Corsair? I have to send this back, so I don't know if I should be doing this. I don't care, I don't care. La, 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 la. You know, it's my job to give you guys the full experience of ownership here. So can't leave this out. This is like the most important part. Oh yeah, baby. All right, so on the front panel, we've got power and reset, separate jacks for mic and headphone, and a pair of USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports, noise. All right, give me the booty. Let's see the booty. Damn! 
MC Dixon. So dual chamber design in the 280X. We've got our power supply and cable management stuff going on back here. And on the other side, we've got our motherboard IO with, what is this? Let me just, let me, hold on, give me a second here. Uh, HDMI and display port, a PS2 port, Wi-Fi antennas. We have two, four, six USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, one Type A and one Type C, gigabit ethernet LAN port and audio jacks. Our GPU appears to be an XFX model. I believe this is the RAW 2. We'll confirm once we're inside, but I think it's the RAW 2 XFX. I can't really remove these dust defenders because they're being pinched down by the case, but uh, looking it up online, this is using the reference IO. So we've got three display port and one HDMI. You know, I'm gonna switch things up. I'm gonna look at the back side of the case first. Woohoo! Let's take a look. What's going on back here? Ooh! There's our two terabyte 7200 RPM drive, Seagate Barracuda. This bay actually holds two three and a half inch drives. So you still have an empty slot there if you want to drop another one in. We also have some pretty nice cable management back here. I mean, obviously you don't need to be as clean with a dual chamber design. This completely hides everything from the other side, but they still did a really nice job zip tying things. I like how they already plugged in the other modular cables here, even though we're not using them. It's nice that they're just here ready to go in case the user wanted to expand their system down the line. They don't have to dig through any accessory box or anything like that. There's also an empty two and a half inch drive cage here. So if you want to install some SSDs, you could easily do that. I really love the fact that we're just using a normal cable case here from Corsair, a quality case that actually has room to grow. There's room for expansion. I feel like with most pre-builds, they're so bare minimum that there's often little to no room for expansion or upgradability. If you want to upgrade one part, you got to upgrade another part. Uh, for example, we've got a 650 watt, very reliable, like I said, 80 plus gold unit here from Corsair. That should give you plenty of overhead if you wanted to drop in a faster running GPU two, three, four years down the line. Try saying the same thing about any of the power supplies that come with the vast majority of pre-builds. Okay, everyone get ready for the money shot. We're taking the left side panel off now. Let's just put this straight. Right here. Oh, oh, my. oh, it's tight. Oh, it's so tight. Boom, and there we go. Actually, it's, it's really backlit right now. Hold on, let me flip this around. There we go. Okay, actually, it's still backlit. Good thing I don't really care at this point. All right, you know what? I'm gonna power it up. Ooh, that is sexy, baby. Wow, I'll leave it to Corsair to just create the most miraculous RGB experience for their pre-builds. Holy moly. They really did a number on this thing aesthetically. I mean, if you like RGB, this is right up your alley. Look at those 140 millimeter fans. You've got a pair of those at the front. You can kind of see the removable dust filter between the fans and the glass, but uh, it looks really nice. Obviously you don't have to have any of this lighting enabled. You can disable it through the IQ software if you like. You can see RGB strips at the top and the bottom as well. I believe the cooler they're using here on our 3700X is the H100i RGB Platinum, which is uh, one of their premium coolers. You can see it's a 240 millimeter radiator, addressable RGB lighting on the fans and the water block. I mean, addressable lighting on all the things, the fans, the front, the RAM, the strips. I mean, it's all blinged out to the T. Nice motherboard. They did not skimp on this at all. ASRock X570M Pro 4. We have four dim slots. So if you want to expand this up to 32 gigs down the line, you could. It looks like we have an eight plus two phase power design here on the VRM. So if you wanted to try your hand some overclocking, the board and the cooler are definitely more than capable of that. Of course, we have our RX 5700 XT GPU, which is in fact an XFX RAW 2 model. It's very quiet, probably because it's not spinning at all right now. Yep, zero decibel fans. Beautiful. This card's got a pretty nice backplate, actually. I kind of like how the lighting's reflecting off of it. And it looks like we've got an eight pin and a six pin power connector that's uh, nicely tied down here. Cable management on this side is also just, I mean, it's about as good as it can get. Also, it's worth pointing out that there's not an ounce of ketchup and mustard in here. I mean, obviously these are the stock power supply cables. They're black and flat, but I would much rather take that than have the inside of my system look like a freaking hot dog stand. Just above the graphics card, you can see our Wi-Fi module. However, our one terabyte NVMe drive, the MP600 uh, PCIe Gen 4 M.2 drive is not visible at the moment because I think it's mounted right underneath our GPU. Oh, I almost forgot this case has mounting points at the bottom here. You can do two 120s or I think two 140s. Yeah, it looks like you've got mounting strips for both. So you can do up to 280 millimeters of additional cooling down here. What I like about this is that this is a pre-built that has room to grow. The fact that you can drop in more memory here, more drives, uh, and even do a custom loop down the line. If you wanted to, this case is fully ready for it. It has the liquid cooling support, the radiator support. That just gives you so many more options a traditional pre-built does not. The fact that we're using standardized components components means that everything you see here can be replaced and upgraded with ease using any components that are found on major e-tailers or major brick and mortar stores. This is absolutely the closest you can get to having a pre-built desktop PC look, feel, and function like a system you built yourself. And that's that's exactly the type of pre-built that I would recommend to anyone looking to buy one. Let's fire it up. Okay, what better way to showcase the performance of this system than to show me sucking at Doom? Uh, Doom Eternal, that is. Oh, oh, okay. Is that Thanos? <laughs> Why does it look like Thanos? Okay, we're at 1920 by 1080 on Ultra Set. Oh, wait, hold on, let me even check this. Ultra Nightmare, I think that's about as high. Yeah, that's the, we're maxed out. We're maxed out on uh, 
quality settings there. 1920 by 1080, Vulcan API, let's do this. So you can see we're just crushing it right now, roughly anywhere between 100 to 160 FPS. Bonkers, bonkers. Ew, that's gross. I mean, he doesn't look any uglier than he already was. After I'm done playing for a bit, I'm gonna look at the temps. I have the temps being monitored right now with uh, Hardware Info 64. So after we game for 15, 20 minutes, we'll take a look at our temperatures. Holy moly, is this, is this hell? Are we in hell? No, this is Earth. Wow, Earth has seen better days. Unless we're in Compton. Compton always looks like this. Can I kill some demons now? Are they trying to shoot me? You guys are homies, right? No, you're trying to shoot me. What the heck? Oh yeah. All right, we're still averaging well over 100 FPS. This is super smooth. But you know what? The system can handle more than that. Let's go 1440. 1440 pre. Let's see it. Ooh, what's going on here? Ooh, you're an acrobat now in Doom? Try to focus on the FPS and not how bad I am at video games. Thank you. All right, so in the heat of combat, we're averaging anywhere from 70 to 90 FPS. So I would say around 80. 80 FPS is, uh, is kind of what we're seeing when we're in the heat of battle. Again, that's at 1440p, max settings, with a modern AAA title that just came out a week ago. Not too bad. Can I get some ammo up in this biznatch? Oh, what do we say about social distancing? You're part of the problem. Come on. Yeah, I did it, I did it, I did the thing. Ooh. Um, oh my God, that's a big thing. Don't ever do that again. I'm just having way too much fun. I'm, I've, I've stopped, I've officially stopped caring about the video. I'm just playing Doom now. Out of ammo, perfect. Just what I wanna see. Kill him. Eyeball. Oh, it's a crab guy too. Why does there need to be a crab guy? There's already so many eyeball guys. Oh, no, no. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna need more time to get good at this game than we really have time for in this video. So why don't we just take a look at temperatures before I embarrass myself any further. At its hottest, our 3700X got up to 73C. 73C, that's not bad, that's the hottest it got. And we've been playing for, we've been playing for 45 minutes. Those are very respectable temps. What about our GPU, the 5700XT 80C? So not staying quite as cool as our CPU, um, but that's okay. You know, this is stock out of the box performance. I haven't configured any fan curves yet. Something that I would advise people to do if they are seeing higher temperatures. Not that this is like a problem or anything, but if you just wanted to bring, bring down the temps uh, slightly, you could probably do that. Or you can throw in a fan or two at the bottom. There are those mounting points at the bottom of the 280X uh, for additional cooling. So something to consider there, but overall fantastic, buttery smooth experience. Whether we were gaming at 1080p or 1440p, there's even bound to be a handful of games that the system can run at 4K 60 FPS pretty comfortably. Although I know a lot of us, including myself, do prefer to crank down the resolution slightly uh, so that you can get those higher frame rates for more fluidity. But uh, you know, we only tested gaming today. However, this thing is fully equipped to handle much more than that. I mean, it's got an eight core 16 thread processor, the multi-threaded performance on these Ryzen 3000 CPUs is phenomenal. So whether you're doing live encoding in the form of streaming or video editing with something like Adobe Premiere Pro, this thing is pretty much a gaming and content creation powerhouse. Uh, it can pretty much handle nearly anything you throw at it. So altogether, fantastic machine. Would highly recommend if you're looking for a pre-built specifically. Uh, this definitely ticks all the boxes that I'd be looking for if I was uh, in the market for buying a PC, a gaming PC that I uh, just, for whatever reason, didn't want to build myself. So thanks again to Corsair for sponsoring this video. Guys, toss a like before you go and get subscribed for more tech content on the way. Also, sorry for filming in here. I know this wasn't like the ideal shooting scenario. There was glare on the TV. My couch was a mess in the background, but you know, with all the self isolation, I really just needed a quick change of scenery. So hopefully you guys didn't mind it too much. Check out bitwood.tech, our merchandise store. If you'd like to pick up a shirt, a hoodie, mugs, pint glasses, we've got it all. I mean, that's probably an exaggeration. We don't have everything in the world, but we, we got some good stuff there. Go ahead and check it out. It's a great way to help support us and what we do here at Bitwit. That's all for now, guys. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video. I am going to play some Doom Eternal and get better at this game because it's kind of fun, and I'm done working for the day. Goodbye.